أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من لعلكم تتقون أياما بعدودات أما كان منكم مريضا أو على صفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فيها تطعام مسكين تطوى خير فهو خير الحمد لله ولي الصالحين نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونصلي ونسلم على محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين إخوة الإيمان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, Brothers and sisters in Islam We say Alhamdulillah Many thanks and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لحلول شهر رمضان هذا علينا وعلى الأمة الإسلامية that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us to see and witness this Ramadan and so as and so has the Ummah Ramadan شهر كريم ومبارك Ramadan is a generous month. It's a month of generosity and blessings. Shahr al-Siyam, it is a month of fasting, well-being, and piousness of piety. Shahr al-Tawbah, well ghufran it is a month of Tawbah, Repentance and forgiveness. This month is full of blessings. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to introduce Ramadan to us, He did not introduce Ramadan with fasting. So whilst we have to fast as 
one of the five pillars of Islam. When Allah wanted to introduce Ramadan, He did not introduce Ramadan with fasting. So we need to understand. So we are commanded, we are ordered to fast as part of our faith. Five pillars of Islam. Where do we get that? Hadith Ibn Umar. Hadith Ibn Umar says, Bunya qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bunya islam ala khams. Say Islam, say Ibn Umar said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Islam is built upon five pillars. And one of them, or amongst the five, is Salmu Ramadan. Now in this Quran, Allah said that we have to fast because it has been ordained and prescribed for us just like it was prescribed for the people before us. But we come to that. But when Allah wanted to introduce Ramadan, He introduced it with the Quran. So He says, Shahr Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Quran. So this is the introduction of Shah Ramadan. Introduction of Ramadan. Allah says, Shah Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, a lady in which Unzila Fihil Quran, in which the Quran was revealed Hudan Linnas as a guidance to mankind. Wabayinati min al Huda wal Furqan, and it is the criterion between guidance and for, uh, on, on guidance. So our Quran, the constitution, the holy book of Muslims was revealed in Ramadan. This is not any ordinary historian writing it. This is what Allah SWT says. So the good about Islam is <coughs> we have details. So we know that the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. So that gives us the timing of the Quran. And we know where it started to be revealed, which is Makkah. And we know to whom it was revealed, which is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are all things that's clear, that makes the Islam very easy to understand. When you're telling these stories to children, it's very easy for them to get it. Now why? Because the Quran embodies all aspects of the life of the Muslims. So when Allah introduces Ramadan with the Quran, it is for us to do that connection when we are fasting. So he says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمُ Whosoever witnesses the month of Ramadan should fast. Whosoever witnesses the month of Ramadan should fast. So that's the general rule. And then now, Allah SWT explains it. Exceptions. Woman can a married and the person himself does not start, and the rest of the people in the country they have seen it. What was he going to do? Go come into that. It was so confused. Now, so woman can a married and so whosoever is ill, sick. Our Allah suffering, or he's traveling, 
and they cannot fast for then they can break their fast that means they should not fast and in certain circumstances they must not fast but they should pay back now this is the beauty of the deen that it is not to punish you it is not for you to self-destruct. Oh, I'm ill, but I still have to fast. No, you don't. Because if it were that way, then that would contradict when what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he says, You read Allah bikum al yusra. That Allah wants ease for you. Wala you read bikum al yusra. And he doesn't want hardship and difficulty for you. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not contradict himself. So, whilst he knows that there are some part of the world that fasting, the hours are going to be long, like us, for example, like for us here in, in, in Europe, in the UK, but he still confirms, he still consoles us by saying, it is not to punish you. Allah wants ease for us. It's like when you are disciplining your child and the child thinks that you are heavy handed. What do you do as a parent? You say, my son or my daughter or my children, I do not mean to hurt you or to harm you. I just want you to get it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while telling us that we need to fast, we have to fast. But he's also coming at the end of the surah and saying, No, don't be scared. It's not to hurt you, it's not to harm you. Because Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want hardship for you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a good and is a merciful God. So, the Quran has to be read as much as we can during Ramadan. Now somebody asked me a question on WhatsApp and said, well, when, when should we read the Quran? So I responded back by saying, when it is convenient for you. As long as it is not the time of Iftar, as long as it's not the time of Sahur, as long as it's not the time of Taraweeh, when it is relatively easy for you and convenient for you. So you know best that free time that you have, and you sit down and you read it to yourself. Now, some people are not educated in Arabic. They can't read the Arabic text. Then, read the translation. At least for you to follow up. Because it's better and it's the best to learn the Quran from the Shu and to read it yourself. Because you're losing a lot when you can't read it yourself. It will take years, but if you are determined, you get there. Because nobody was born with the knowledge. But you seek knowledge. You search for it. You sacrifice for it. Because the reward that you get when you can read the Quran is far more greater, it's much more greater than any effort that you would have invested in, 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 the, in the reading of the Quran. And some people, they are self-defeatists. Ah, oh, no, you know, I did not go to madrasa. Subhanallah, I've got a B in economics. I can go back. Well, how did you get your BA in economics? 
How did you get your BSc? How did you get your Masters? How did you get your driving license? How did you get your other qualifications that you have? You work tirelessly. So you are a stronger Muslim when you can read the Quran and you can interpret it. And I always say to people, you have a big opportunity here in the UK that you hardly go to any masjid now without finding qualified imams and shuyuk. So you don't need to go to Saudi Arabia, you don't need to go to Jazai, to Algeria, you don't need to go to Madrid. You don't need to go to Tunisia. You have all those people, imams, qualified, they're here, that you can learn from them from this Ramadan to the next Ramadan. They're available. Because for every half, you have ten Lord. So just imagine how much blessings the Imams are getting just by opening the Quran and reading. So by the time they read like an hour, they will have they will have got billions. And depending on their intention and depending on their state of mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you die for Iman Yashah. He increases and doubles and quadruples for whomsoever he will. Some people, you can listen to audios, you can buy the CDs, the DVDs of most of the Imams now, it's on tape, you can listen to them. Even if you don't understand, but just because you are listening to the Quran, you have ajr. This is the month of the Quran. It is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran down. And when you read the Quran, apart from the ajr that you get, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a hijab, put a veil, a covering between you and evil stuff, and bad stuff, and bad people. And much more so in Ramadan, when the shayateens are all tied up. So you have nothing but nurun ala nur, light upon light. And also, some people in other religions, they're using the ignorance that the Muslims have got about the Quran to convince them into accepting their own religion. For example, if you speak to our Christian brothers and sisters, they think, some of them think that the Bible was written originally in English. So they think the Bible is English. The Bible is not English. The Bible was translated into English. And the man that translated the Bible into English was killed because they thought that he was he was he was doing something evil. But now because people can easily read English, so it's easily accessible. So some Muslims feel comfortable reading the Bible than reading the Quran. So therefore now we have translations into Arabic. We have African language that the Quran has, the meaning of the Quran has been translated into. So you can, we don't have an excuse now. Now we are moving in a, in a stage, in an era where it, it's very, very difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to have an excuse. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ وَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَادٍ 
see, human beings, we like to give excuses. But this time that we live in now is becoming very difficult. You can't say, I did not have a shirt. You know a lot of shirts now. You can't say, I did not have access to the Quran. Now you have access to every aspect of the Quran. Written, audio, visual, everything. Translation, access. Now some people, instead of listening to the Quran on their phones, they prefer to listen to music. But even in YouTube, there's Quran. That's been uploaded. So let us, brothers and sisters, use this opportunity, this Ramadan, not only to listen to the reading and the Taraweeh, but to have time with, uh, within ourselves or for ourselves and, and read the Quran at home. Read the Quran on the bus, on your phone. You can, you can download it now. You can be reading it. You can be reading the translation of it. So I don't want to take all of the time because my Sheikh is here. And Yes, we were still going to give him the, the microphone for him to say a few words before we finish. Exactly. Right. Okay. So to recap, for our brothers who have been joining us, we read a few verses from the Quran. We said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he introduces Ramadan, he did not introduce Ramadan with fasting, but he, he introduced... Ramadan with the Quran. Because he says, Shah Ramadan Allah is the only Quran. That this month is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to reveal the Quran. And this is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Bottom line is, you read Allah that Allah intends and wants ease for us. Wala you read and he doesn't want hardship for us. And to make it even more easy, Allah said, ma'adudat." These are limited number of days. Okay? Ramadan is not going to go on forever. It's going to be 29 or 30 days, and that Ramadan is concluded that year. So, today is the, what, today is what day? Today is day two, right? Just like that. So we started on Saturday. Today is Sunday. Inshallah, and the next... 14 minutes, then we have two days. Now, if we are going to fast 30 days, that is 30 minus 2. If it's 29 days, that's 29 minus 2. So next week, this time, if we are alive, then we may we have made progress, right? So what does not kill you? Makes you what? Make me stronger. Last year we were stronger. We came out of Ramadan, mashallah, stronger. We didn't die. And we're even healthier. So this year again, inshallah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. And finally, when we go to do our iftar, please do dua. Please make dua. Make dua. And when you start to make dua, is to praise Allah first. Alhamdulillah. Then, you say the Salah al Ibrahimiyya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And then, you pray. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself, for the Ummah. And most importantly for all our people who have passed away. We can't give them money now. But they need our dua. Remember them. Those who were there in this masjid. Those who are there in your lives. As long as they died with the deen. Pray for them. And pray for our brothers and our sisters all over the world. Who are going through difficulties. 
Because when you make dua for your brother and dhahr al-qalb, when they're not there with sincere intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an angel to say, walaka maklu dhalik, and may you have the same. So it's a win-win situation. So if I pray for my brother, say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this my brother is going through difficulty, make it easy for him. How would you feel if there's an angel saying, may you have the same? Oh Allah, bless this brother's children, bless his family. And Malaika is just saying, may your children be blessed, may your family be blessed. So please don't be too much, don't concentrate on the food. The food is there, there is enough food. Sit down quietly wherever you are and make those dua. Because it is one of the times when the dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And please, in our fasting, let us remember that um, we are all going to go one day. So pray for that time. The time is up now, inshallah. And um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and guide all of us, and to bless our teachers and our, Im our imams, and to bless all our good people who have gone beyond in this masjid and in anywhere in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the Ummah peace and may Allah bless us in every project that we endeavor. May Allah bless our children and our wives. May Allah bless our our parents. Okay, Jazakum Allah khair. Wa akhu da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Rashid, can we go straight to the back home and let's go to the far end, please.